morning, good morning. I'm going to open up with a word of prayer and get right into the message. Heavenly Father, most high, Lord Jehovah, we thank you for another opportunity and the day that we can come in to the living rooms of many through this Facebook platform, this YouTube platform, and preach the word of God. Thank you, Lord, and let your word have free course in our lives. In Jesus' name we humbly pray, amen. You see the title as a continuation really from last last week about the sellouts. Now, again, I want to distinguish. The sellouts are the Judases, the ones that are among you betray you. Your brothers, your friends, one of you betray you. We're not talking about and I'm going to get into this, the buffer class like Obama, Kamala Harris, or even uh, some of these other people that never were with you. They don't, they don't sell you out. They just never were among you. They're created as a buffer class. Now, I'm going to get into that message later when we talk about that buffer class that was created, but they never considered themselves black. Now, I didn't come up with this name, but really that buffer class is considered the mulatto class. Dr. Chancellor Williams, write that name down, a black historian. Uh, Dr. Chancellor Williams, the destruction of the black civilization. He describes a class that was created that came in into North Africa. That well, the invade when invaders came into North Africa, and they conquered lands in Africa. Well, it had intercourse with the women that they conquered, the African women. They create well, the children of that, those relationships that were created, became what they call a mulatto. Or a buffer class. They would take those individuals and they would make them overseers now of the people. They would use them and they would tell them, you're not like them. Even though your mother is that. Well, the father is the one who really governs the so-called nationality or the allegiance. The allegiance of the child is always by the father. So, the father would say, you're one of us. You're not really one of us, but... You're not one of them. You're above them. That's the class like Obama and Kamala Harris are in. They're that buffer class that they use to rule over the indigenous people. We're not talking about them. We're talking about the ones that are among us. The ones like us. We're talking about, say like in the, since we're dealing with issues in Philadelphia now with the murder no, not accident. The murder by the police of Walter Wallace. Let's talk about Philadelphia. And a lot of see Philadelphia is one of the most corrupt cities in the nation. I can't imagine a city being more corrupt than Philadelphia. Most of Philadelphia's funds, tax dollars, goes to entitlements. It's tied up in entitlements of politicians and crooks that sat in the city council and Philadelphia office. That's why Philadelphia's system, SEPTA system, it's a transit system, is one of the highest, if not highest, in the nation. Because entitlements. In Philadelphia is a very corrupt city. And you have people, sellouts, like Wilson Good. Like Mayor Nutter, like all of the street boys, Ron White, all those kind of individuals like that, and you got them now in it, and they're now. The police Commission, 
They'll bring in somebody. They'll bring in the police commission from out of, out of state. Never know about Philadelphia, but they'll put a figurehead in there and say, well, we got the first uh, female black commission in Philadelphia. Let's just wave the pom a consolation prize. But what does she do for you? What is she going to do for you? We'll bring in Richard Neal. What is he going to do for you? We'll bring in Sylvester. J what are they going to do for you? Bring in stock, stop and frisk. The last commissioner they had, police commissioner. Reenact what Rizzo had going on. Where they had the boot police go around. Paddy wagons jumping out on uh, people standing on the corner and kick him with, with, the boot, with their boots and stuff. That's what Rizzo did. Just a police state in Philadelphia. Very corrupt city. But what Philadelphia knows, even though Philadelphia is about 46, last I heard, percent black or African American, whatever you want to call the race, the race by, it's not controlled by them. You have, again, almost half of the population is black, but yet all of the union contracts goes to people that aren't black. How is that? You have people and contractors that live in Virginia that have contracts in Philadelphia. How is that? Sell out Negroes. Sell out politicians. They get their money. They get their entitlements. They get their health care to sell out the rest of you. And they get in there and, oh, we got a black this, a black that. But all he is is a sellout because he got his money and he's going to retire with a good pension and benefits for the rest of his life on your tax dollar. Corrupt city. The buffer class. The Bobby Rushes. How will you go from a former Black Panther into a, now you're a congressman and you're selling out. You know who pushed for the crime? Yeah, the crime bill was job authored by Joe Biden. We know that. We know who Joe Biden is. We know he's a uh, Klansman without the sheet on. But you know who pushed for that crime bill? People like Bobby Rush, Maxine Waters, Kowase and Fume, people like that. The Boule class, they pushed for it. We got to do something about this crack academic. We got to do, we got to lock them up, lock them up, lock them up. That's the answer to it. They lock people up instead of handling an issue. Instead of handling somebody who has, is mentally challenged, shoot them, get rid of them. And now we see the parents of those individuals come out and say, well, we don't think the police was wrong in what they did. They just weren't properly trained. I had a post that I put out on Facebook earlier about training. Training, reform, whatever you want to say. The police just need more training. Dogs do what they're trained to do. That's what they're doing. But they, they don't have rationale. As much as you think, dogs don't have rationale. They do what they're trained to do. So they work on a reward system. They reward or punished. And also there's the absence of reward. But they're looking for that reward. So they'll do what they're rewarded to do. Two-legged or four-legged dogs. So, more training for a dog doesn't change his nature from being a dog. He's still a dog. You get the analogy? So, more training isn't going to stop them from being a racist. A racist, a racist organization, a racist mindset is not going to go away by somebody being trained. I sent out another, I retweeted or re, we call it shared, liked, or uh, another post of the Walter Wallace shooting, or yeah, shooting, opposed to someone of another race doing the exact, actually doing worse than what he did in the face of the cop, waving the, waving the knife in front of the cop and the cops are backing up. They took him alive. 
What's the difference? Go to the book of Galatians, 6th chapter. Galatians 6. I'm not going to be too long. Yeah, I got a lot to preach on this. So I'm going to have to break this up in a couple messages. Galatians 6 and verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Why not go to this verse? That verse, we say in our common vernacular, you get what you deserve. What you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Why am I saying this? And why does this relate to the title of this message? You got to be care you got to be careful. You got to watch out for that house negro and that house negro mentality i know this is going to hurt because there's a lot of people that take this stance you and this is the, this is what they got out there a man died and people are worried about property more than that per person dying i i don't agree with the looting i don't agree with the looting there ain't no need for the man died what about the life Let me, and see, give me an example. We got this Agent Starling, Jody Foster, Clary Starling, Supreme Court, who they just, uh, what do you call it, confirmed. Amy Barrett. We got that. I'm going to try to use the right word to call her. We got that racist. I'll just say racist. I can't say something all over. But we got that racist in the office. And I said, but she got a black child. <laughs> oh, that's bad. She adopted a black child. We got this Amy Barrett in the office and said, it's okay to use the N-word. It's not offensive to use the N-word. So if you use the N-word on a job, it's not uh, something that's offensive. It's not racist. What does she think? What do you think she called that child when that child act up or don't do something right? Get over here, you little N. You acting like an N. You acting like the rest of the N's. She said it's okay. It's not offensive. Okay. Well, you know what I say to Amy Barrett and all those who agree with that? Is it not offensive to use the N-word? I say, I don't condone slapping somebody in the mouth. I don't condone doing that. But, if you think you can go on a job and you can go around your so-called black friend and use the N-word, if they slap you in your mouth, you got what you or you got what you reaped. You sold the discord of getting slapped in the mouth. Go, go ahead and do that. Go ahead. All the ones who agree it's all right to use the N word. Go ahead and do that around it. And if you get slapped in the mouth, you got what you deserve. See, the thing about people today, they don't want to take accountability for their actions. So you, know, you got yes, a young woman. A young woman whose mom tell her, go out, go out there and use what you got to get what you want. And she goes out and dresses like a harlot. And then when something happened to her, sexually, then she want to cry foul. Does that give the person, the perpetrator, the right to do that? No. But you reap what you sow. That's what I want to get at about these people out there talking about the property and the looting. Do I condone looting? No. But you reap what you sow. If you kill my cat, I'm going to kill your dog, I'm going to kill your frog, and I'm going to kill your fish. You reap what you sow. Listen, let me give you another example of this. I'm not going to be on here too long because I'm running behind. 
Say, for instance, that you're a spectator. You got two teams. You got Team KKK and you got Team Black Supremacists or Black, black Community. And you got the different people on the team, boxing team. And you got a fighter in. You got two fighters in, from inside. One from KKK and one from Black Black National inside. You have them in there fighting. All right. They're in there boxing. They're boxing under the Nevada State rules. There's rules to boxing. You can't just go in there and do everything. It's a supposed to be organized boxing competition. So there's rules to it. Each one has to follow the rules. Now, the referee is the arbitrator, the mediator, to make sure the enforce. The referee is the judge. The referee is the one to enforce the law. He's the overseer of the event. Get the analogy? He's the overseer in there. Okay. So, in doing the boxing match, the, K, the one from the boxer from Team KKK hits the other his opponent below the waist. You know what area I'm talking about? And his loins. In boxing, that's illegal. A low blow is illegal. So once he does it, the referee, the overseer of the event, says. Warning, you can't do that. That's illegal. The one the other one who got hit low is mad. The one from the team Black National, he's mad. Oh, you hit me low. That's illegal. Oh, okay, the referee warned him. He does it again. The referee warned him. Next time I'm gonna take a point away from you. That means you will lose that round. He does it again. The one who got hit again second time is infuriated. And said, wait a minute, he hit me again down there. The referee, I saw it. But, you know, we'll, we'll take some points away from him. He does it a third time. And the referee said, all right, I'm going to take a point away from you. I'm going to give you a settlement. <laughs> you see how this is all fitting? I'm going to give the person a settlement. So the, you, you and your team will get additional points for what he was doing illegally. But yet, you know, you're still in pain and agony from him cheating. Alright. So he does it again. The fourth time, Team KKK hits Team Black Nationalist Fighter below the waist. Now, now he's doing it seems like he's doing it on purpose. So what does the one from Team National, I'm going to take this and the referee ain't doing nothing about it enough. Because this guy should have been suspended. This guy should have been prosecuted for his crime. So what does he do in retaliation? Oh, you don't like that word. We don't like that word. But retaliation. Again, I'm on the sidelines. I'm not saying, neither, I, I'm, I'm for justice. Hey, I'm the one on the sideline saying, I'm a spectator, and I'm saying, I want to see a fair fight because that's the rules. But I've seen, I'm as a spectator, I've seen this man hit the other man low four times. Now, for those who don't know, one of the worst things, now, I'll, I'll I hope you don't try to use this improperly. But I know about boxing. And one of the worst things that you can do, places that you can hit a person in boxing, even worse than hitting them low, and why it's illegal, is to hit somebody in the back of the head. The back of the head controls your balance and your equilibrium. you got three main parts of your brain. The cerebrum, the cerebellum, which is the larger part, and the back, the medulla oblongata. The medulla has your balance. You hit somebody, if you hit somebody in the back of the head, and it doesn't have to be hard, they'll lose coordination. That move 
is banned. It's legal in boxing. Now, so, in retaliation, what the team black nationalist boxer does is he hits the team KKK person in the back of the head. That's illegal too. In retaliation for what he did. That's the same. I'm, I'm, I'm putting that in an analogy as looting. He said, wow. Since all roles, the referee's not doing nothing about cheating. All's fair. Now, who, who said this? Who started this? All's fair in a game of war. So all rules is out the window and the referee, all he doing is playing Mr. Softy on everything. I don't care about that point he deducted. And he play, so I'm going to do something illegal. Since you're being illegal, I'm going to do something illegal. I'm going to hit this guy in the back of the head and wake him up or knock him out. And when he hits that person on the, in the back of the head, the rest of his team, you get it? The sellout on his team. Said, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. No, you he shouldn't have did that. Forget about hitting him being hit low. Oh, you shouldn't have hit him in the back of the head. Oh, oh, oh that I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that, master. You shouldn't have did that, boy. You, they should have, they should have locked, they should have suspended you. They should have called you off of you, because you, you ain't supposed to hit nobody in the back of the head. That's what a lot of individuals sound like when they're talking about property. The reason why property and looting is going on, I know some people out there doing it just to make a show or just using, there's just opportunities. <coughs> But you reap what you sow.